What's happening guys, Jay here and I'm back with another Omocha review. This time, we're doing something a little different. I have here with me, of course, uh, Kaiju number no. 8's SH figure arts, particularly Kafka Hibino, the main protagonist, and his um, buddy here, Reno Ichikawa. So, um, Kaiju number no. 8 is uh, an anime I've been obsessing about recently. I absolutely love it. It's filling the void that Attack on Titan kind of left because the premise of the show is kind of similar. But it has more of a... It has more of um, a lightheartedness to it because of the main character being uh, a jokester like uh, Kafka Hibin over here. Now, as you can see, the box is really, really great. Um, I'm not gonna throw this. This is the kind of box you don't throw, right? Because you can display the character as is. It looks great on its own. It's very lightweight, as you can see. Um, and yeah, the color, is, it just pops out, right? So as you can see, there is the... Uh, Tamashii Nation's uh, logo here, the Bandai, of course for, by Bandai. And um, some Japanese um, writings here, the sticker, the Tamashii Nation's uh, sticker here to make it to show it's authentic, right? So overall a pretty good box. I like how it's very, it's very befitting of the aesthetic of uh, Kaiju number no. 8. Here is the... Uh, the entire set for Kaiju number no. 8. Nice uh, size for it. It's perfect to display on your shelf without it looking too small, but at the same time without it looking too big. Now let me just check out how to... Uh, okay, so there's a, there's a sort of lid here. You pop that lid open, just like that. There is tape here, by the way. Um, I just remove all the tape beforehand to make things fast for the video. You don't want me... You don't want, you don't want to see me removing a lot of tape. And then over here, as you can see, there we go. Here is the uh, the initial body or the, the default body of uh, Kaiju number no. eight. Um, let's focus on the uh, the sort of details of the face first. And as you can see, I really like I like how the whiteness of it is very accurate to how it's it was animated. It's not too um, bright white. There's sort of grayish, skullish white going on. Of course, that's how it was designed for. Okay, um, the eye, the detail to the eyes, let me just uh, see if we can focus on the eyes there. Uh, there we go. See the detail of the eyes, if you can see that, there is really that sort of um, black rings to it, really give it that pupil effect. So the attention to detail, of course this is Time Machine Nation, so we have reviewed some SH stuff here from the Monster Hunter line, you can go check that out. The quality is really amazing, right? So even the the design of the teeth over there, of course the the horns are nice and symmetrical. Going to the back, you see the sort of spine here, the sort of bluish or turquoise lines here, very nice. Okay, of course the abs, you can see the abs can be moved there, and of course the feet. Overall, the proportions are really nice, I would say. Like, it's very accurate. I, I don't see anything particularly worrisome here or um, inaccurate. The paint job, I, I would say the paint job could have been a little bit more premium looking. But, you know, this is a not-so-bad price. It's not that um, much expensive. It's below, um, it's below $80 when I got it. So, as you can see, it stands up on its own very well. It doesn't really need a lot of support or things like that. And while that thing is uh, moving about, let me just clear out some of these stuff, these uh, things. And let's focus on the freebies, or sorry, not the freebies, but the parts that we get over here. Okay, so as you can see immediately, you get three different face plates for this um, product here for Kafka. You have here several uh, expressions for him. So you have one that's... Uh, this is the screaming part where he goes bez um, berserk, I think. And then you also have here a sort of poker face reaction over there. And then you have here <laughs> my favorite one, actually. This is the um, co comedy faceplate, the funny meme-ish uh, faceplate. But even if, if it's uh, for gag purposes, look at the detail of the teeth here. Right, It's super... It's just super um, well thought out of the separation of the teeth, even the shading of the tongue. Look at that. 
Okay, those are the faces. I think that's a great thing about this thing is you have a lot of uh, face plates. Um, to remove the face plates, we simply just have to, uh, it's very easy. You just have to um, dislodge the peg here, faceless Kafka. Let's uh, give him a bit of uh, the funny face. And there you have it. So you have the funny looking uh, Kafka there. <laughs> see, uh, I might display it like this. It's really hilarious, see? There are no instructions here, by the way, that you get like a separate sheet of instructions. There's nothing like that. Instead, you get simply these ones here printed on the box. And um, you also get these parts here, which I think is for the feet. I'm not that familiar with um, over here. So um, I'm actually quite not sure um, what the purpose of this is. I think it's for him to boost his um, his kicking power or something like that. I forgot already. Um, with how it turned out in the anime but yeah um, as you can see the feet is there and then he can open up um, if you've watched the anime of course he can um, morph his body into so many things and I think this is one of the ones he showed on season one so let me just um, um, check this out and show you guys how it's gonna work all right guys so here's the uh, pose that I made as you can see I, I made a mistake a while ago the part that I was um, referring to were actually um, one for the for the leg and the other for the arm so as you can see over here the leg has those um, protrusions two of them have the same um, size but the one at the back is much much more longer and of course the uh, shin as i mentioned has changed completely you get a sort of a mouth effect on the shin right because uh, kafka can create those mouth um, parts all over his body so it's very different from the normal one as you can see over here so what you do basically is you just take this uh, off. There's a peg here for this entire shin, as you can see there. And then you take off the feet and then attach it like so. It's very simple. It's very um, it's very easy to do actually, and it feels very sturdy and secure. Now the other one, the other part that I showed you a while ago, was actually his arm. Um, it's uh, when uh, Kafka changes uh, the uh, when he morphs his forearm to be something like this, to sort of have like these. Um, protrusions over here and then he uses that to sort of power up his punch right so um that is another option as you can see this is the normal forearm and then you have here the powered up version so um it's not much really uh i wish this could have been benefited from effect parts but of course you can buy that separately although that's another um expenditure but yeah it's not a premium premium product per se you know it's not it's cheaper than a figma um, but yeah, uh, overall, the, the the parts that you get here, I think this is a good touch. Just makes him a little bit more different. And um, pose-wise, when you have the, the, that kind of uh, alternative shin or calf, whatever you want to call it, it is kind of harder to pose Kafka here. I'm sort of posing him in a goofy position over there. Simply because of the length of the... Uh, <laughs> the length of the, the sort of protrusions here. Other things that I'd like to point out is that the uh, the build quality and the the articulation of the torso is really really nice. There's a lot of things that you can do here, as you can see. The, some parts are malleable, which is really nice. As you can see here, it's almost like skin or leather. There, okay. Um, the arms have a lot of uh, the, um, articulation also. So I won't go through all of them, but one thing I'd like to uh, point out is the toes are a nice touch here. You don't usually find this, but you can articulate the toes also to give it a bit of a touch. Okay, so um, if ever you're getting this, I highly suggest you, you know, explore the articulation yourself. Um, but overall, I would say the articulation is one of the strong points of this uh, figure. What I don't like about it is it doesn't have any effect parts, could have benefited from at least one or two. Just the, the lightning marks that he gets there. And uh, I would say the paint job could have had more shading. But, you know, what can we do? Anyways, let's proceed to the next one, which is Reno Ichikawa over here. There's something quite interesting here that uh, might go sort of uh, unnoticed. And that is when you buy other figures apart from Kafka over here, you actually get bonus faceplates. 
um, from each for each character. So basically, what Bandai is letting is asking you to do is to collect all of them, which I will, I would. <laughs> but if you're a big fan of the anime and the manga, you would collect all of them maybe, and you get uh, a Kaf a bonus Kafka faceplate for every character that you buy. So right now you have. A lot already. You have Reno again, Mina. You have Hoshina, and then there's the a Kaiju number nine. I think is also there. Here you can see a little different difference in packaging. Um, the sort of uh, plastic has there's additional plastic here to protect some parts of uh, of Reno. Remove that, and you can see this guy is really well designed. I mean, he looks like a main character. He's one. Of He's one of the side characters that I find could have been a main character. I mean, look at him, he looks like Kaneki or something like that. Um, Ichikawa, as you can see here, is significantly smaller than Kafka. Maybe Kafka might, might be 6'5 here or something, I don't know. And then Reno might be in the 5'11 or 6 feet range, who knows. So he's not really small actually, it's just that Kafka is very big. Um, as you can see over here, uh, the paint job, I like the paint job more of the uh, of the military uniform or the, I forgot what you call them, but yeah, the their uniform basically. As you can see, there's the, the breastplates there, nicely done. I like the shading of the gray and or the black hue here, also nicely done. The white, the hair. The expressions of Reno or the expression of Reno over here, as you can see, is also really well done. Very accurate, looks exactly like him. Nice detail also um, on the shoulder plates here. There you go. What else? It's, it's pretty straightforward compared to Kafka because it is a human figure. So it's meant to be realistic. So he uses the standard rifle and he's really good at it. If you saw on the anime, a, a nice touch here. It's the blue one, which he had a sort of highlight for. I think these are the freeze bullets or something. So it's color blue. Um, nice rifle. Again, again, could benefit some more with some more shading, but it is what it is. Nice straightforward um, rifle. He gets a lot of different hand plates over here. So you get two sets, one closed and one that is open. He also has a pointing one here, which is for the rifle when you're holding the rifle. And then, as for the face plates, he has an angry version. He has another angry version, grit, um, sort of biting his teeth. He has an aloof one, which is in line with his initial um, character there. Sort of aloof and then my favorite one would be the one where he's of course wearing his mask which i think just makes him look badass so nice detail on the mask all right guys so here is reno ichikawa doing a pose that i made so as you can see it's a very dynamic pose sort of uh, in his military crouch position or something like that so um I one thing I'd like to point out immediately is how well the colors pop up in this uniform. Um, you can see the contrast of the white, the dark green, and of course the grayish hues of the main uniform. It just works so well and it actually looks more premium than Kafka because of the, the shading of the white. Okay, The white um, plates, even the hair of Reno, has way more better sh shading compared to the black sort of um, flat colors of Kafka's uh, body. Um, Things that I'd like to point out here, it's a very light figure, um, this one here for Reno, so it's easy to um, articulate. As you can see, the gun there fits snugly, very, very cool. And then um, one cool thing also is that similar to Kafka, if you can see the toes here, it can also be bent um, to give you even more dynamic poses over there. So that is really awesome. As you can see, I, I actually love this pose. This might be my go-to pose. For Reno, but there are so many other poses that you can do. So um, if you look at the box over here, there are some others here where uh, this one's kind of similar except he's pointing his gun. 
a um, lot of pointing guns there's also a running pose over there and of course his neutral pose but yeah overall this thing really rocks i i actually like this more than the kafka figure just because it looks more premium but if we pose them together as you can see the scaling is awesome here uh, again kafka is in uh, his kaiju form very huge but they work so well together these two besties senpai kohai and uh yeah i absolutely love it and you also get of course the free faceplate of kafka for every character that you buy for renos it's the very funny one over here um i love this yeah look at the tongue there the smiling face sort of unhinged i would give this a rating of 8.5 out of 10 um, for Reno, for Kafka, I would give him a 7.5 out of 10 just because um, some effect parts would have made this better, if not some better darker shading, I think, because the shading of Kafka is really kind of flat in, to my liking. But overall, still great, okay? For avid fans, do get this. It's around $80 only. Might get that for even less, if depending on your supplier. So it's just an awesome piece to display on your shelf. Anyways, that's it for today, guys. We're going to have more reviews um, this year. I'm going to review an Evangelion EVA-01 um, metal build figure. There's also going to be uh, Anne reviewing the new uh, line of Monster Hunter figures. Uh, forgot the name. And then um, I have some news about the Zoids series because there's some exciting stuff happening next year for the Zoids franchise. So stick around and wait for our videos. Anyways guys, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Um, I'll see you guys again. If you like this video, please do hit like and subscribe to Omocho Reviews. Until next time, goodbye.